from Westminster Hall, the coffin is borne by a bearer party from the Brigade of Guards. With the Royal Air Force escort, it will now be drawn by a Royal Naval gun crew to St Paul's. This has been the Navy's privilege ever since the state funeral of Queen Victoria. Winston, Leonard, Spencer Churchill, Knight of the Garter, Order of Merit, Companion of Honor. Following the gun carriage, his family and close friends. In the first carriage, his widow and his two daughters. Officers of his own regiment, the Queen's Royal Irish Hussars, bear his orders and decorations. So began his last sad journey. Not since the last century has the honor of a state funeral been accorded to a commoner, but who more worthy of it than this man who more than any other helped to preserve this century of the common man. He it was who provided us with an image of ourselves as we would wish to be. Winston Churchill served his country and the world as a champion of democracy. Now the world joins his countrymen to pay homage at St. Paul. The familiar faces who knew him as a giant among parliamentarians, those who knew and revered him for his vision as a statesman, as a power for peace as much as a leader in war. Russia's Marshal Konyev pays tribute to his former comrade in arms. Representatives of over a hundred countries of many races and many creeds. Archbishop Heenan, the first Roman Catholic primate to attend a service at St. Paul's. The President of France among the monarchs and other heads of state. the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. Their motor accident after the funeral was an unhappy sequel to a day of mourning. Churchill served the British crown during the reigns of six monarchs. The close bond between the royal family and their most faithful servant is at the very heart of this ceremony today. On this occasion, the Queen waives her right to be the last to enter. This privilege is accorded to the Churchill family. Acting as pallbearers, 12 famous men 
who drew strength and unity from his inspiration and who are now united in grief. The hymns chosen for the service were among Sir Winston's favourites. the Dean calls the congregation to prayer. We are assembled here as representing the people of this land and of the British Commonwealth to join in prayer on the occasion of the burial of a great man who has rendered memorable service to his country and to the cause of freedom. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Ramsey. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that as we are baptized into the death of thy blessed Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, so by continual mortifying our corrupt affections we may be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection for his merits who died and was buried and rose again for us, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Walking with her son, Randolph, Lady Churchill. We pray she may have found comfort in sharing her sorrow with so many. To the sound of muffled bells, the cortege moves now towards the Tower of London for the final phase of the state funeral. To the river near the tower which has seen so much of London's history, a man of history is born. To the Duke of Norfolk, the Earl Marshal had fallen the onerous task of assembling this great procession, a task magnificently carried out. But no burden is so hard to bear as grief. The coffin goes aboard the launch Haven Gore. Lightnings of the Royal Air Force fly past in salute. A 
river journey to honour a Lord Warden of the Sinkports and an elder brother of Trinity House. The state funeral ends here. The burial is a private family affair, but before we end, we recall an earlier glimpse of Blenheim, the family home of the Spencer Churchills and the birthplace of this, their greatest son. Sir Winston would often look across the park towards the little church of St. Martin at Bladen. Often he would come in later years to this quiet churchyard where, by tradition, the Churchill family is buried. It was his wish that here he too would lie, and not so very long ago, as he stood beside the cross that marks his father's grave, close by the place where lies his brother, John, he chose his final resting place. Next to the grave of his mother, the mother he loved so dearly, he pointed to a plot of ground and said, this is my place, here. Here and in the hearts of us all.